You are the orphanage raised, perpetually lonely, tragic heroine. Were you abandoned by your parents? So pitiful. Being raised by others must have left you clueless about people's feelings. Maybe you're not cut out to be a caregiver? These words were directed at me by a nurse. Nurses are angels in white? Isn't that a lie? Whether tomorrow will be sunny remains uncertain. However, one thing is clear, the past cannot be changed, but the future can. My name is Hilary Brown, a 31-year-old caregiver working in the palliative care ward. Until recently, I worked in a care facility rather than a hospital. Here, I'm still a novice. I haven't been entrusted with tasks like assisting with meals or bathing yet. My duties mainly involve cleaning and odd jobs. I want to learn my job quickly and become a trusted caregiver. Perhaps it's natural, given the weight of lives in our hands, but this hospital feels perpetually tense due to its strict rules. Yet, it might not be just about the rules. There's a senior colleague who always keeps me on edge, Nancy, a two-year-older nurse. Hillary. Yes, what is it? Just hearing my name makes my body tense up. You gave chocolates to a patient, didn't you? Oh, chocolates? Yes, you did. What were you thinking? Um, was there a problem? Was there a problem? No way. She's furious. And I'm trembling. Honestly, stop looking so gloomy. It ruins my mood. Well, I... The patient is on a restricted diet. Waiting until something happens is too late. I hurriedly corrected the misunderstanding. No, this patient has no dietary restrictions. I confirmed it. Besides, the patient expressed a desire for it, and I also checked with the family members who were present. So? Huh? You didn't check with me, did you? Uh... Yes. How dare you talk back to me? It's not like you can just distribute chocolates, as if it were Halloween. I didn't intend to talk back but I close my mouth, I don't want to anger her any further. In the palliative care ward, meals are managed by nutritionists. Of course, each person's condition varies, so we listen carefully and provide accordingly. The most important thing is that patients can eat what they want. Eating brings happiness and a sense of satisfaction. Even if it's just a single piece of chocolate, it made the patient happy. I felt happy too. When something happens, it's my responsibility, you know? What can a rookie caregiver like you do? I apologize. Honestly, don't you understand even the basics? That's why people who come from care facilities. I clenched my teeth, barely containing my frustration. Whether a nurse or a caregiver, we're all part of the same team on this ward. It's hard to accept being looked down upon, especially when our roles are different. But harsh as her words were, I think she's right. Even though I checked with another nurse, I should have made sure she knew too. After all, we're a team. Thankfully, nothing serious happened this time. I need to reflect on this. I'm sorry. Don't make a face like Charlie Brown, it makes it seem like it's my fault. I apologize. Honestly, I'd love to see the looks on your parents' faces. Oh dear, Hillary, were you raised in an orphanage? I completely forgot, my bad. I couldn't believe my ears. She's definitely saying it on purpose. 
her faint smile makes me nauseous. She always speaks like this, mean and spiteful. Oh, right. They're not here. I guess I can't see them. Sorry about that. No, I don't mind. It's the truth. I intended to say it calmly, but my voice trembled. I can't lift my head in frustration. Hillary, that kind of expression isn't good. This is a palliative care unit. Looking like you're at a funeral is bothersome. I didn't mean to. Do you know that patients dislike you? Well, I'll be more careful from now on. Excuse me. If I stay here any longer, I might burst into tears. I return to work. By the way, what does it mean to have a face like a Charlie Brown? Unfortunately, I have a sense of what it feels like to be disliked by a patient. Just one patient in particular. This patient consistently ignores me. While it's easier to accept when someone confronts me directly or refuses my help, being ignored is more insidious. As a caregiver, I encounter a range of patients in the palliative care unit, some gentle, others more aggressive. They grapple with pain from illness, side effects of medication, and the upheaval of daily life. If there's anything I can do to support them, I want to give my best. However, being ignored leaves me feeling utterly helpless. As a caregiver, communication through conversation is part of the job, yet. Excuse me. I step into the room of the patient who consistently ignores me. Her name is Linda, an elderly woman with beautiful white hair and a composed demeanor. The first time we met, I felt like we'd crossed paths somewhere before. Was she a television actress? But since then, I've never seen Linda's face. Whenever I enter, she pulls the covers over her head and turns toward the wall. It's not due to any physical ailment. Apparently, she doesn't behave this way with others. Beautiful weather today, Linda. I said, but there was no response. The south-facing room had a lovely view, with cherry blossoms along the river visible. As I tidied up the room, I spoke aloud, almost like talking to myself. Linda, you know, I've loved Hershey's since I was a child. I always carry some with me. When I offered it to a patient, Nurse Nancy scolded me. Still no reaction. It was always like this, and it made me a little sad. Linda didn't want to converse, didn't want to see my face. Her thin back conveyed as much. I couldn't pinpoint when she started disliking me, it had been this way since our first meeting. Excuse me. After finishing the cleanup, I left the room. Why was she so averse to me? Even if I asked, I doubted she'd provide an answer. No matter how much I pondered, I couldn't figure it out. Maybe it wasn't my fault. Perhaps she had her reasons. Supporting her through the rest of her life, that was my job. If I dwelled on being disliked, I wouldn't be able to do my work. A few days later, as I diligently went about my duties, Nancy stopped me once again. Hillary. Yes? What have you done? Her intimidating demeanor remained unchanged. Um, what do you mean? I haven't given any more chocolate. It's about Linda. Oh, is something wrong with Linda? Linda still lay under her covers, refusing to engage in conversation. I had merely made casual small talk about the weather, comments like, it's going to rain this evening, or it's chilly today. As usual, there was no response. I was confident I hadn't done anything wrong. Linda doesn't want you coming in anymore. Huh? You probably did something unnecessary. 
I haven't. Well, that gloomy expression of yours isn't helping. Linda is usually cheerful and smiling. A momentary pause in my thoughts. Whose words were those, exactly? I've never seen Linda smile. Go apologize to her immediately. But that's impossible. What? Don't act helpless. I don't understand why she rejects me. Just apologize. Even if I apologize without knowing what I did wrong, it might upset her. Are you trying to avoid it? Growing irritated, she glared at me. I'm bewildered. What have I done? Replace me with someone else, as Linda suggests. That's not my job. Besides, nurses and caregivers are in short supply. It's obvious. Then what should I do? I'm telling you to apologize for now. I couldn't say anything more to her stern expression. With a jumbled mind, I head toward Linda's room. To think she doesn't want me there anymore, what have I done? I feel utterly lost, unable to pinpoint any wrongdoing. Excuse me, I'm Hillary. As usual, when I entered, Linda buried herself under the covers. I wondered if anything I said would just make her uncomfortable. Um, it's quite windy today. I commented on the weather, and then it hit me. I apologize if I've been talking about the weather too much. Did that bother you? No response. Well, of course not. She probably had no interest in conversing with an unwelcome presence like me. Yes, I understand. I apologize. I'll be more reserved in the future. Please allow me to continue supporting you. If another caregiver is found, I'll step aside immediately. Until then, I apologize. That was all I could manage. Ideally, I wanted to get used to my job quickly and take care of Linda's needs. But even before crossing the starting line, the rejection weighed heavily, sadness, inadequacy, and frustration threatening to overwhelm me. As I left the room, Nancy was waiting outside. You did apologize properly, I assume. Yes. And how about Linda? She didn't say anything. Huh? She didn't respond. Nancy sighed in exasperation, giving me a disdainful look. Even if you were to apologize with that face, Linda wouldn't forgive you. You remind me of something, a freight car from Thomas the Tank Engine. But really, she wouldn't even look at my face. I didn't know the reason, and I couldn't fathom what I needed to be forgiven for. You seem to pity yourself. Nancy continued. Raised in an orphanage, an orphan, like a tragic heroine. I don't think that way. Were you abandoned by your parents? She asked with a smirk. Anger surged within me. No. My parents died in a fire. My grandmother took care of me, but she passed away a few years later. Everyone was kind to me. Hmm. The orphanage was a good place. I don't want anyone to think I'm pitiable. What are you saying? Pitying yourself. After all, there's nothing left for you, right? She scoffed. Her words hit me like a shockwave. Because you were raised by others, you can't understand people's feelings. That's why Linda dislikes you too. My heart pounded in my chest. I was speechless with surprise. Maybe you're not cut out for caregiving. Nancy added, laughing again, and returned to her duties. I'm not a tragic heroine. 
I've lived supported by the kindness of many people. I became a caregiver because I want to give back. I'm definitely not pitiable. The past can't be changed, but the future can be altered infinitely. I believe that. By the way, what is Thomas the Tank Engine's freight car? I've never seen them before. The next day, I stood outside Linda's room. I took a deep breath. Whether she ignored me or disliked me, I still had my duties as a caregiver. With a simple knock, I entered Linda's room, my footsteps silent. What I saw made me question my eyes. Linda was reclined on her bed, gazing directly at me. Surprised, I looked away. As I began cleaning, confusion overwhelmed me, I didn't know where to start. Ah. Uh. Yes, I've definitely seen this woman somewhere before. Should I say something? My instinct was to engage in casual weather talk, but I held back. Perhaps silence was best. Even as I worked diligently, I felt her eyes on me. What was going on today? Could it be that she was upset about yesterday? I braced myself for whatever she might say, but she remained silent. Yet, there was a hint of a smile. Just as I was about to leave the room, something happened. It's my fault, isn't it? Yes. Perplexed by the sudden conversation, I ask for clarification. Linda, who hadn't shown her face until yesterday, was acting strangely. What's the matter? I inquire hesitantly. Um, well. Tomorrow, I wonder if it will be sunny? I'm taken aback. She's bringing up the very topic she seemed to dislike, weather. I'm not sure how to respond, but I manage. Yes, probably. I meet her gaze directly and exit the room. I don't understand what's going on, but her behavior is clearly different from before. I feel genuinely pleased. Perhaps we can talk again tomorrow. Building trust, little by little, seems like a good approach. My lips loosen into a smile. Since working on this ward, it's the first time I've felt an uncontrollable grin. The next day, I received unfortunate news. This is the reality of the palliative care ward. Linda's condition deteriorated rapidly during the night, and by the time I arrived for my shift, it was all over. Sometimes, fate can be cruel. As my colleague and I cleaned out Linda's now empty room, a woman entered. It was her daughter. We apologize for your loss. My colleague and I both said to her daughter. The daughter checked my name badge and handed me an envelope. It was addressed to me, Hillary Brown. Turning it over, I saw the sender's name, Linda Martin. Linda herself. Until yesterday, she had disliked me, so why a letter now? I was puzzled. When had she written it? Did she even know my name? The handwriting was unmistakably Linda's. What could be inside? I hoped it wasn't resentment or reprimands related to work. Or perhaps reading it would reveal why she ignored me. Lost in thought, I stared at the letter until the daughter said. Please read it. Hesitant because I was still on duty, my colleague encouraged me. Go ahead and read it. To Hillary. You'll be surprised that I'm addressing you this way. And by the time you read this letter, I won't be here anymore. There's something I want to apologize for in this letter. I apologize repeatedly. I'm a coward who couldn't bear to be disliked by you, so I couldn't say it directly. When I coincidentally met you, I was truly astonished. The little Hillary I knew, same name, same voice, but not the same smile as before. 
Your face looked anxious. Was it because of work? No, it was me who stole your smile. So, I have no right to approach you. I'm sorry. I was the landlady of the apartment where you and your parents lived. You probably don't remember, as this story goes back to when you were a baby. It was the night the building caught fire. Arson. I lived in the neighboring building, and I rushed over immediately. But the fire spread too quickly, and there was nothing I could do. Your family, living on the second floor, was trapped and waiting for rescue on the balcony. Your mother noticed me and tossed the sleeping little you over to me. The moment I caught you, your parents were engulfed in flames. The building turned crimson, and your crying echoed. I'll never forget that day. I'm sorry, it's my fault. You were taken to an orphanage since you had no other relatives. Feeling sorry for you, I pretended to be your grandma and visited you every month. Whenever you spotted me, you'd run up with a beaming smile. Around the time you turned five, you started resembling your mom more. I couldn't look at your face directly anymore because it reminded me of the fire. I struggled with guilt and pain, but I decided to pretend I was gone and distanced myself. I'm sorry. Even though you must have suffered much more. You probably resent me. If only I hadn't been there, your parents wouldn't have perished. Losing your grandma suddenly must have hurt you too. I'm a coward. I've been silent until you noticed me. I'm sorry. But I want to talk to you again. What should I say now, after hiding under the covers? I'm a timid and cowardly person, but I'll gather my courage. Let's start with the usual weather talk, just like you always did. What expression will you have? Then we can chat a lot, but I probably won't mention your parents until you read this letter. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hillary. My time is limited, so please forgive me. Just a little longer, I want to chat with you, not as your grandma, but as an adult. I'm selfish, I know. It's okay if it's only until you read this letter. It probably won't be a long time, but I'm looking forward to it. I wonder if I'll see your smile, like the clear sky from the past. I'm sorry, please forgive me. P.S. I know you like Hershey's chocolate. I taught you, after all. Next time, could you share one with me? I stood there, dumbfounded. Memories flooded back. I remembered my grandma, who used to visit me every month. That's why she looked familiar. I wanted to see Linda, no, my grandma, right away and deny that it wasn't her fault that my parents passed away. I wish I could tell her not to burden herself so much, not to apologize so profusely. Linda's daughter spoke up. My mother was genuinely delighted to see you grow up. But she couldn't accept receiving care from the person she had abandoned. The reason Linda had hidden under the covers wasn't because she disliked me. Knowing that didn't bring any joy. Regret and loneliness filled my chest. I had been blaming myself all this time. I should have realized sooner. Grandma I knew was lively and always smiling. Yet, she only spoke a few words. Linda's daughter asked. What did you talk about? We discussed the weather. Whether it will be sunny tomorrow. I was taken aback. No more tears. I needed to lift my head. Don't worry. Clutching the letter tightly, I made a strong promise. I'll do my best. Because I'm sure grandma is watching. 
The room was thoroughly cleaned and disinfected. Even though there was no trace of her presence left, I hesitated to move on. At that moment, Nancy passed by. Hillary! Is the cleaning done? Yes. After being rejected for so long, you finally got to take care of Linda. Well well. She maintained her usual spiteful demeanor. As I glared at her with contempt, she seemed irritated and retorted. What's with that look? Next time, be more useful. Yes, I'll do my best. Honestly, you're such a handful. Inexperienced newbies. I took a deep breath and, facing her grumbling back, delivered my words with the brightest smile. Hey, Nancy. Maybe nursing isn't the right fit for you? Huh? Your unpleasant personality shows on your face. What? Some patients even find you intimidating. Please, put on a smile. I felt like I'd been reborn. For my sake and the patients, I resolved to speak up from now on. As I gradually learned the ropes and worked tirelessly every day, I found myself mentoring a junior colleague. Now I was the one being asked questions. Nancy still addressed me with her usual commanding tone, but it no longer bothered me. I used to think her strictness stemmed from a strong sense of responsibility, but it seems I was mistaken. The truth is, she piles all the troublesome tasks onto me and blames me for any mistakes. That's just who she is. Then, one day, the nursing supervisor had had enough of Nancy's behavior. Although she put on a meek facade in front of higher-ups, they all knew better. Apparently, she was taken to the infamous consultation room, which was more like a scolding room. I have no idea what transpired in there, but when she emerged, she looked utterly drained, like she'd lost about 11 pounds. Maybe there's a gym behind that door? Best not to pry too much. I occasionally think of grandma, but I no longer cry. After all, that's how I've lived my life until now. Despite no blood relation, she was a kind person who cared for me. I'm truly grateful that I got to see her before she passed away. Nowadays, patients sometimes say things like, You have a nice smile. Or, Talking to you is enjoyable. Of course, there are also patients with whom conversation is difficult or who are in pain. But I do my best to engage with them. There are things you can only realize by genuinely facing someone, and I'd regret it otherwise. To Grandma, though this letter will never reach you, I felt compelled to write a response. Why? Because the weather has cleared up, and I wanted to share the news. Work can be tough, and there are times when I feel exhausted. But it's okay. Thank you for coming to see me. Thank you for the letter. Thank you for remembering me. Thank you so much. P.S. When times are tough or I'm tired, Hershey's chocolate still does the trick. How did you find this story? Please subscribe to the channel as well. Let's meet again in the next video.